good evening. We are glad to have you guys joining us with TCM Live tonight. We have a special guest. Where? You. No. Tim Coates. Oh, yeah, I guess so. The great TC. <laughs> and if you've been in our uh, chat room at all, you will recognize his name, TC Coates. He gets in there and he talks with us a little bit. And he's a pleasure to have on board. And he's one of my mentors and most favorite people in the world. And I am blessed to be able to do this show with him. Wow, what an honor. <laughs> Scary, too. Yeah. Usually it's Larry delving out all the flattery, but it's me tonight. Yeah, that's strange. That's strange. Yeah, I'm usually on the other side of the camera doing something or here at the studios. And, yes. Uh, you know, so uh, he had a good topic tonight, kind of came to heart. And, uh, you know, Leslie and I and Larry and Sean are always figuring out what's what's next, what's relevant to today's students. And and uh, this kind of just came out on top. You know? Yes, I'm excited about it. And we're going to open up in prayer and then we'll, we'll get into it. Choices cool. is what we're talking about tonight. Yes. Father God, we just love you so much, and we just pray that you would continue to be with those in New Orleans and uh, South Louisiana and anybody who may be affected by the storm, God. I just pray that you would be with them, give them your comfort and your peace, God. We thank you for looking out for us, God, and we thank you for what you're going to do in this show tonight. We pray that your Holy Spirit would soften hearts and open hearts, Lord. Those who need to be challenged and convicted would be so, but not condemned, and those who need to be encouraged and lifted up would be so. God, we love you so much, and we thank you for this day, we thank you for this night, and we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Amen. Yeah. Hey, you know, uh, one thing we always do is tell people how to get a hold of us. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And they can get on. Uh, actually, the best way to get in touch with us is through Facebook. Just go to our Facebook page, Teen Christian Ministries Live. It's totally typed out, not just TCM. You can find us there. We try to post some cool stuff from time to time. We're actually going to have um, weekly posts uh, mm -hmm. from a girl named Victoria, and she's going to like be doing blogging and stuff for us ah. directly to ah. our Facebook page. We like to blog. So, stuff. Yes, we do. Yeah. So we're really excited about that. You can sure. also get us through email at, I think it's tcmlive at gmail.com. Sure. And you can connect with us through our and Twitter webpage and, and Twitter. Tumblr and Snickers and, and everything else. Sure. We do. are wherever you want to be. Absolutely. Yeah, that's where we're going to be because that's the way Jesus said, go yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. He said, go out and just do something. That's exactly so right. So we're doing something tonight. We're doing something. <laughs> and we're doing it with TC, and yeah. TC tonight. TC yeah. and TCM Live. TC and that's TCM. A, that's a yeah, question. that's going to be confusing. <laughs> yeah, it is. So what are you going to talk to us about well, tonight? Well, choices. Uh, there was a story I, I was reminiscing with an old schoolmate about two or three months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I went to uh, NLU, which is ULM now, yes. I was thinking about... <clears throat> Uh, the topic of choices for students because they're going back to school. Right. They're in school now. And I, and I was thinking about something that I could say that would be relevant in their life. And it made a buddy of mine and I kind of reminisce of something that we saw happen on the ULM campus many years ago. Mm. used to be a, a, a dorm there called Olin Hall. It was about 11 stories tall. Yes, and should have been condemned 20 years ago. Yes. Well, yeah. I, well, I stayed <laughs> my first semester as a freshman. I stayed on the 11th floor. Uh huh. So we had to always get pushed aside by seniors in the elevator. But on the first floor, there were some guys, uh, some upperclassmen, let's just say juniors and seniors, and they were up really late at night, probably playing Nintendo 64 or Commodore. That goes back to <laughs> oh, the... Oh, uh, Atari? Yeah, maybe? Atari, <laughs> Gallagher, you know. And, and they had the idea of doing something wacky and crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, about that time, there was a song that was out by a guy named... Oh, what was the name? Well, it was called The Streak, if you know what I mean. Oh. Okay, where you go streaking. Yes, exactly. Okay, well, these guys had the idea... By Ray Stevens? That they That's wanted... Yeah, Ray Stevens. <laughs> The guy, he wanted to do this challenge, and he said, hey, let's let's do something weird. Let's run around the dorm. Nice. So they decided to do that. So you got four butt-naked guys running around the <laughs> dorm. And then they got back to the dorm, and then they says, hey, let's see who's a real man. Let's run across to the cafeteria and back. Oh, nice. So then they did this. Because the cafeteria was yeah, right across, across the, the street. street. Yeah. Yes, of so course. So then they said, who's the real man? Let's run to the Coliseum run around it, and run back. <laughs> so this is like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Okay. And so strangely enough, you know, ULM police patrol the area quite a bit. Yes. And what does a police officer say but four butt-naked guys running around the Coliseum? <laughs> well, one of these guys is really smart, and he dashes off to the side, and three of them are physically caught. I wouldn't say red-handed, but they were caught. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, this other guy slipped Red behind, yeah, <laughs> slipped behind the, the cafeteria and was going to come up the bayou side. Mm -hmm. Well, he tripped on some concrete, nose planted himself down, and needless to say, it's not a good place to be. When the police says, put your hands over your head and spotlights hit you on your tush. Oh, my god! It's not gosh. a good thing. No. They handcuffed the guy. Said, where do you live? He lived on the north side of Monroe. Oh, my gosh. They knocked on his door, and that's not the place you want to be at 3.30 in the morning with your mother opening the door and you standing there in handcuffs with police officers <laughs> around you. Not a good choice. So that <laughs> no. the term of choices came out yes. that, there, that, that for each decision we make determines our destination. That's right. His destination was embarrassment. Oh, that's, what, that's what his destination for sure. was. You know, but that story circulated around you know you for for quite a long time. It's, wow, it's an epic story. <laughs> Needless to say, not not a wise choice. No, please you know. don't do that at home. No. <laughs> Just another bad decision. Yeah. So I was thinking about is as students go back to school, particularly freshmen and sophomores, they will meet people that they have never met before. Yeah. Okay. Some of them can enhance their life, but some of them can bring them to a new low. Mm -hmm. So I told students when I when I talk to them at church, there will be students that you'll meet, and I and I and I hope you choose wisely who you hang around because who you hang around is who you approve, and if you're the Christian that you say you are. If you're hanging around with bad people, you're going to be noted as a bad person. Yeah. And then I hope that there's some there that you never meet, that you never come in contact with, because they can change your life radically. And some people are either followers or leaders. Right. Okay. So we have to choose as a Christian, who do we follow and who leads us? Right. Needless to say. Okay? Yeah. And we all, at some capacity, lead. If we have influence in anybody's life, we lead them. And yeah. we all have the yeah. capacity to follow. Exactly. But it's who yeah. we choose to follow and who we choose to lead that makes the difference in the outcome of our life. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think it was, oh, goodness, now my mind just went blank. It was Bob Dylan, wasn't it, that sang the song, You're Going to Have to Serve Somebody? Exactly, yeah. And the song says... You'll either serve the devil or you're going to serve the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. somebody. And you know, we don't think about that. We don't think about how it's that. It's really that black or white. Right. You're either going to serve the devil and, right. and, and be destroyed and go into destruction and heartache, or you're going to serve the Lord and see him right. glorified and lifted sure. up and make a difference in, in their life. Yeah. Students ask me a lot of cases, how do I know what's right and what's wrong? Mm -hmm. And it's easy to answer that question by saying, if I do this, will this glorify God? Yeah. Yes or no? If the answer is no, then don't do it. Yeah. Like, hey, there's a party Friday night after the football game. Right. you got to ask yourself, alcohol involved? Drug involved? Right. What, what's the right decision to make? The easy decision is to be the, the follower and just go along with the status quo. Right. The hard thing is, says, I don't think I can make that, guys. Well, why can't you make it? You don't have to give them an excuse why, or you just say, I just don't want to go. Right. And as you get bolder in your faith, you can say, that's not where I am. That's not who I am. Right. Then they start to see you by saying, what's different about him? Then one of these days, they will say, what makes you different? Right. And I said, well, I met a guy a long time ago. Who'd you meet? Well, Jesus. Boom. Testimony time. Right. And there's a way you can bring that into the mix once they see the decisions you've made and the destination that you're going to. Right. Yeah. And it's not easy to stand up for your decisions, but when you do stand up for your decisions, you oh, make yeah. a greater influence sure. than if you go along with the crowd. Yeah. You know, you can say, yeah, I'm going to go to the party, but I'm not going to drink. Yeah. But then, you know, maybe somebody offers you something. And sure. yeah, I used to be known as One Sip Sally. <laughs> Should I admit this on webcam? I'm not sure. That could be a song. That could be a song. <laughs> but when I was in college, I worked at um, I worked at Clinique at the at the makeup counter, mm -hmm. and they would have parties or whatever, and yeah. we would uh, they would go, and I would go with them. Yeah. But they knew that I was one sip. I wasn't going to take more than yeah. one sip, and they would try to get me to take one more than one sip, and I couldn't. That's and then eventually, thing. yeah, but eventually I didn't drink at all because I realized yeah. what well, I don't even need the sip for. Yeah. It's just to assimilate, and I don't even need to yeah. do that. Years ago, there was a a, a saloon type in town called the Blue Monkey. You remember that place? Yes, do I do. Okay, there was a Christian group there called Twelve Stones. They were kind of like Switchfoot. Uh -huh. They were Christian guys, but playing secular music. Yeah, and I liked their music. It was kind of a harder rock at right. the time. And I was, you know, doing some radio stuff at the time at eight eight seven. So I said, let me go get these guys, and they were good. But I saw a lot of students there 
who were not supposed to be there. And there were so many people, they had to kind of move them outside. Yeah. And when they saw me there, they said, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. And then the beers went behind their back and they dropped them on the ground <laughs> like busted. Yeah. Okay? But also says, well, isn't this where Jesus came? Mm. And then they said, oh, yeah. See, they, they forgot about the decision they made to go, and, and they were there, and they just got caught at it. Right. You know, right. we had a lot of conversations about that. I mean, yeah. Why are you here? Number one, I came here to hear the band. Number two, I'm coming to checking up on you. Yeah. Oh, well, that showed that I cared, and also that I wanted to say who the band was and say, are these guys real? Should yeah. we play them at the station? Yeah. Yes or no? Because every decision leads to what? Our destination. Our destination. Yeah. And we don't really think about that because a lot of times, it's like the first story that you told us when we first began. You know, those yeah. guys are just thinking about having a good time. <laughs> they had not yeah. one thought passed having a good time. Yeah. And it quickly bit them in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> Almost <exactly>. literally. <laughs> you know, when I was around, I guess I was late 20s. Uh, I was going to church, going through the motions. Yeah. And everything. And some of us are late bloomers, <laughs> kind of like me. Mm -hmm. Not that I wear bloomers, but I bloomed later in oh, life. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't do that. Larry <laughs> might, but I don't. <laughs> I'm glad to know you don't wear bloomers. <laughs> no, I don't. But, uh, you know, you realize one day when, when the word is spoken or something said, you say, how did I get here? Yeah. And it's by all those small choices that we made along the way. It's kind of like the road goes and it forks off to the left or the right. Right. You know, which path do I take? Well, this road looks smoother. Well, it may be... But the road that most people take. Mm -hmm. and if you go back to Revelation, what does it tell us about the broad road and then the narrow gate? Right. Everybody's going this way. Right. What's so hard about this way? Well, it usually has trials and tribulations and ridicule and mockery and talking about. And most students don't want to go there. Right. But what they need to do is stand up for who's going to stand up for them later on. And sometimes that doesn't hit until later on in life. Right. How did I get here? And then you start to go back. Oh, I see. Hmm. Didn't realize that. And then it brings you up to where you are now because you choose differently and, and you get a little bit more wisdom along the way. Yeah. You know? But it is hard. It is hard to stand up. But when you keep in mind that life is intentional, whether you want it to be yeah, or not. Very intentional. And that whatever decision that you make absolutely not only affects you, but affects those people around you. Yeah then we really need to live more intentionally and realize, okay, if I choose to do this, who is it going to affect? And like you said, you know, I, I often ask myself this question if, I, if I'm between two decisions. I'll say, well, who does this have the possibility to honor? Is it going to honor God yep. or is it going to aid Satan in his right. plan of destruction? Right. And, you know, if you really look at it and you ask for God's wisdom, he'll show you. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, and sometimes what he's asking you to do seems like it's a dangerous thing, you know? Right. But if you believe that he is with you and he's holding your hand through it all and he is going to be there for you and he's definitely going to get the glory in the end, then you know right. that that's the path that and you need to follow. it could be the safest place you could be because he's there with you. It's exactly yeah. right. It's kind of like saying, hey, I want to go to Ruston and we go this way. Right. Well, you could eventually get there, but West is in studios is this way. Right. Makes a big difference. It does. I always tell people, I says, use your GPS. And I, I truly believe that each one of us that is born has got a God-given DNA inside of us that draws us to God. Yeah. Whether we recognize it or not. Right. And when we learn to recognize that, we get discernment and we get wisdom. If you go back to, to King Solomon, what right. did he ask for? Wisdom. wisdom. And what did God give him? Lots. Yeah. I mean, he got blessed wisdom and beyond Bill Gates. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, but but it was really cool that he asked for wisdom and it really woke up his eyes. And they said people would come to him and just line up to draw wisdom from him. Mm -hmm. There's a great story in Proverbs. About a month ago, my pastor was doing a little thing on Proverbs. And he, you know what throw down the gauntlet means? Yes. Back in the days of the night, they would challenge somebody. Well, he threw down the gauntlet, and he says, I want you guys to start reading one chapter of Proverbs every day. You know, Proverbs is not very big. Right, it's 31 and chapters. I, yeah, and I ran across Proverbs 7, mm -hmm. and King Solomon is up like he's in a window. Mm -hmm. And he sees this young guy that's walking down the street. Yeah. And then he sees this, let's just say, lady of the evening. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In a nice kind of way. Yeah. Uh, and she entices this young guy. She says, hey, I've been looking for you. Mm -hmm. And then she says, hey, my husband's out of town. 
he took a lot of money, he's going to be gone for a long time. Get my cue? There. Right, exactly. So he falls for the trap, and Solomon is like up in the window, and he's looking down, and he says, I see where you are, but I, but, but I see where you're going. The young man didn't know where he was going because he hadn't got the wisdom yet. Right. That's why I tell students, talk to your youth pastor. Open up to him. He's yeah. been where you've been. Right. I've been sometimes where they hadn't been because I'm older than they are. Right. But wisdom is, is, is great. And I used to spend a lot of Sunday afternoons talking to a wise, wise man besides my father named Hugh Shields. We would spend hours and hours reworking baseball gloves. Mm. And then Hugh would give these baseball gloves to kids who couldn't afford it for wow. baseball. And he was probably the wisest man. I recognize this like I had a beating horn. Kids would come up to him. They would hug him. They would love him. He knew every kid's name their mom, their dad, how many pet frogs they had, wow. how many girlfriends they had this week. I mean, he knew everything about everybody. And I said, I want to be like him when I grow up. So I started hanging around him. Mm -hmm. And I drew that wisdom from him to do all that you can do in life to the best of your ability. And you can't, if you can't, let it go. Yeah. Because you can't control it anyway. Right. So that's a, that's a lot of what Proverbs is saying. Mm -hmm. But Solomon was looking at this young kid saying, I see where you're going. This is a death trap. Mm -hmm. You know, and so the kid says, hey, I'm the rock star. I've got the lady of the evening. I'm top notch. Yeah. No, you're, you're, and think about today, disease and things that are out there, it could be deadly. Yeah. You know, much right. less your reputation that you've worked so hard for. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't go places and, and do things with some people simply because I've worked too hard to get to where I am. And I, and I, that, that's a, that, that's just like gold to me. Yeah. I want to keep it there. Right. Because that is a sacrifice that I'm giving to God. Yeah. And and a lot and students need to think about it just that same way. Don't go to that party. Hey, I'm, we're going to go out on a date. Yeah. One date leads to kisses. Kisses leads to something else. Yeah. And that's in another show altogether. That, right. You know, and it's, it all goes back to, to, to the choices that we make leads to a destination. Right. And God's word says yeah. that bad company corrupts good character. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So sometimes it doesn't matter what you've done. It's just the fact that you've been associated with those people who do bad things. Yeah. So if you make the choice to go out with them, then you also yeah. need to realize that you have decided that you'll take that label. Yeah. It's just a date and it's just a kiss. No, it's a decision. It is a decision. You know, well, I'm going to go to the party. Well, that's a decision. Yeah. I'm going to talk back to my parents. That's a decision. Yes. Hey, uh, I'm going to, if, if you work... And there's a party going on, and you call in to say Chick Fil A or Taco Bell, wherever you happen to work at. Yeah. I'm not feeling very good tonight. And then you call in, and then you're not really sick. Mm -hmm. Now you're lying. You're deceitful. You're probably going to lose your job, and somebody's going to find out about it. Right. Is that the best medicine to do? And it all comes back to decision leads to the destination. Yeah. And and it's easy to say, and sometimes extremely hard to do. And when you realize yeah. as a Christian that you don't live for yourself. Yeah. That you're an ambassador of Christ. Yeah. And so whether you want it or not, what you do is a direct reflection of your Savior. Oh, drastic. And so if you are living a life that's in contradiction to what you're saying with your mouth, they're looking at what you're doing far beyond what you're saying. Yeah. And they're, they've labeled you as a hypocrite. Matter of fact, the world loves to label yeah. Christians as a hypocrite. They're looking for opportunities oh, sure. to call us hypocrites. You could do everything... I always go back to baseball because I, I love the game of baseball. Mm -hmm. There was a guy that played for Chicago for many years called Billy Buckner. Outstanding player. And in his later life, he he got on the Boston Red Sox. Mm -hmm. He was playing first base. I believe it was the Mets they were playing in the World Series. And there was a ball that was hit to first base. The game was extremely tight, late innings, whatever. And Billy Buck couldn't get down fast enough, soon enough, because of, I think, of age. And a ball went between his legs, and Boston lost the World Series. Mm. The whole world remembers. They call it, well, there's another Buckner for you. They remember uh -huh. what Billy Buckner did, but they don't know the millions that he gave to charity. Mm -hmm. The eyeglasses that he bought, the testimony that he had, mm. and all the good stuff that he did because he just couldn't get down to field the ball one time. Right. And people, you know, people are haunted by that stuff like that. Yeah. You know, just think if you're a senior in high school, you've been the FCA president, you've done all the stuff that you needed to do, and then prom comes around, and you get into the limousine, and everybody's drinking, and then you have one drink, and then the next day at school, they say, or Monday, hey, did you see what Bill had in his hands? Right. He's drinking. Right. Boom. You're gone.
Yeah. Reputation is gone. Absolutely. So that's sometimes hard to swallow, and you've got to really protect that. Just like girls and their virginity, they got to protect that. Yeah. You, you know, it's just it's just tough in life. And I want to you share, know? eventually we're going to share, uh, I've been listening to a podcast called Cherished by Marion Jordan, mm-hmm. and she talks about that and about how we need to protect our purity, not seeing purity as a rule to be abided by and to be broken, yeah. but to see it as a vision to be fulfilled, to realize yeah. that God has called you to a higher standard, not because yeah. he wants to limit you, but because he wants to bless you. Yeah. But we're talking about these decisions and, you know, do you have some steps that you would give in order to just kind of encourage them to say, these are some things that you can do when you're in that situation? In a way, Coach, you know what I do on Saturday night too. I'm involved in a worldwide global uh, church online thing. Yes. I was in the live prayer chat room with a 13-year-old female mm-hmm. uh, this last Saturday night. Mm-hmm. She has, he has gone hormone crazy mm. over guys. Mm-hmm. She, she says she's believed, she believes in Jesus. She's professed him as Lord and Savior. Mm-hmm. She's not plugged into a youth group. Okay, And yeah. she knows some, some Christian friends, but she doesn't hang around. Them. Yeah. So we talked just about that. What we're talking about tonight is... You got to get plugged in somewhere. Right. Here, we're so lucky to have so many outstanding youth groups. Yeah, we do. Uh, I'm in Life Church. Larry has got a great youth group. Real Church at Liberty yeah, Grove. At Liberty Grove. Sean, Church. First United Methodist, Absolutely. Chris Tromador, Mount Vernon. You got, you got Mr. Actually, Wood. Actually, he's at First West now. Oh, is he? Yeah. Okay. I've learned that yeah. new. And then you got Mr. <laughs> Wood, who's at First West, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you've got, uh, you know, Jared Peters, who's up at Fair Park. I mean, you've got so, so many around here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you had Beck over at Family Church. Right. You got, you're, yeah. You've got so many churches that you could do. And, and you can find strength and unity in numbers. Right. You know, and, and yeah, it's kind of scary to kind of open up. Yeah. But if you can't open up to your youth pastor or to your really close friends who have walked the walk, you know, there's a there's a deep, deeper pride issue that, that you've got. Right. you got to have accountability. Right. you got to have accountability. You do. That, you do. That, and that, you name some men, but also at First West, there's Brandy Howard. Yeah. Amazing uh, women's ministry. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. she does teen girls. And, yeah. she and that's why great. we call this thing TCM Live because... It's, it's, it's non-gender. We right. talk about guy stuff, girl stuff too. Yeah. You're here. Uh, Dion's here. You got Teresa that's on board. You got right. Lindsay with life choices. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of females that we surround ourselves yeah. with because I don't know how girls tick. I'm still figuring it out. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know. and I know how girls tick, but I ain't got no clue about boys. Yeah, so we just kind of <laughs> lean on each other and hope for the best sometimes. You yeah. Know? But, but I always go back to the thing about uh, of a GPS system. Yeah. If you want to go someplace or if you want a goal in life, you got to plug in where you want to go to mm-hmm. and then trust something to get you there. Yeah. If I want to go to Venice, Louisiana which is not a good place to be today. No, not or today. A hurricane, but you can plug it in and it will lead you to your destination. Yeah. You can either take the scenic route, which has got hardships and troubles, or you can take the fastest route to get you there the fastest. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like the scripture. How do you know what's right and wrong if you never read your Bible? Right. How do you know if you never go to a home group or a cell group or Sunday school or, or whatever, whatever your church calls this thing? Right. If you never associate with Christian students, how do you know how to act? What's good and what's right. Right. Say if you don't have a bigger brother or a, or a bigger sister to lean on. Right. Now, they may be off the path, too, so you got to watch who they are. Right. You know? And the yeah. hardest thing I say is students who are trying to do the right thing, but parents don't go to church. Mm-hmm. But I've seen some students who are really vocal, and they've brought their parents to church. Yeah. And then their parents have accepted. That's And fantastic. then it becomes a, a, a great thing. Right. And even if you fall off the horse sometimes, we know people... <laughs> particularly females, who have gone beyond where they wanted to go. Right. But they've recognized it. Mm-hmm. They've repented. They've prayed about it. And they are so much stronger now than they were before this ever That's happened. Right. That's right. And true. it was all part of their testimony. Right. You know, yeah. and you can be absolutely pure on the inside and in and in God's presence just as well uh, as as. as Man, somebody who's been with a lot of guys or girls. Right. It's it, it's all God's grace and mercy. Amen. You know. Yeah. But but there's a couple of things that you could do. Number one is is accountability. Yes. 
Number one, you've got to draw strength from somebody. Right. You know, and we're all we're all on TCM. You can send us a note. You can call us. You can, a lot of us, you got our phone numbers. We'll be glad to spend some time with you or direct you to somebody that you is closer to you than you think. Such right. as your youth pastor. Right, exactly. You know, and, and find people you like and hang around with them. People that that, ha- that, that have the walk. Yeah. That, show, that show the walk. Right. But you gotta you got to dig into the Word. You've got to get into the Word every day. Absolutely. The good thing about the smartphones is you can carry it with you everywhere you go. Yes. Because I use my version like crazy. All the time. I you know, know. Me I too. I still like to carry my old school Bible. Mm-hmm. It's got a lot of notes and a lot of memories Yeah, mine too. But I can plug in plug in during church the message, and I put it on there, and people can see notes of what we're talking about at church. Mm-hmm. It's just a cool way to do. You can yeah. research. You can look from. I like to read uh, NLT, mm-hmm. the Living Me Translation. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I go back to King James because sometimes the literal translation takes stuff out. Right. We talked you know, about that the other day. You know, and, and and you need to get back to to the original meaning. Yeah. You know. So, but but there's a there's a lot, there's a lot of ways to do it. The best thing is is find somebody who's walking the walk and talking to talk. Yes. And hang around there. That's it. That's the best way to do it. That's it. I agree with you. Wise counsel. Seek yeah. wise counsel. Wise counsel. Yeah. And you, you can't buy that at Walmart. No, you cannot. No. And, and they are not dropping their prices for that. Yeah. That <laughs> is going to cost you. It but it's worth it. It might hurt a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's That's worth it. it too. Well, I have the pleasure of, uh, of being able to mentor some girls too. And my own daughter yeah. is close to being a teen. Yeah. Um, is it scary, mom? Yeah. Yeah. It's scary. I mean, being in youth ministry for years, but then raising one yeah, is a, 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 a whole different story. Got a different twist to it, doesn't it? But it's still a blessing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, yeah. TC, it's for coming. It's a good show. In. It's a great topic and something that we can all get out of. Now, whether you're adults or whether you're students, because I'm sure some adults are going to watch this this show as well, too. Yeah. Put it into your life. Yeah. Put it into your work-related routine at work. That's exactly you know, people right. Are, people are watching what we do and they're watching our actions. That's very true. And we'll be praying yeah. for each of you yeah. and stay on chat if you need to talk to someone, if you need to pray with someone, yeah. if you just need to share your life with someone, we can pull you aside. We can do a private chat. We can pray with you. Don't neglect this opportunity to be ministered to tonight. We love you and we will see you next week. God bless. <gasps> The gnome. Hey, I didn't know Chris Trompador was coming. (laughs) (laughs) That's not right. (laughs) All right. You guys, as we say uh, years ago, peace out.